Hello Divination and welcome. In today's video, I'm going to show you five creative ways of how to use Divi's built-in margin and gutter controls. These are the examples of what we'll be working on today. So without wasting a lot of time, let's dive in and let's get started. Okay, so let's start off by creating a brand new page. So I'm going to come over here to pages, click on add new. I'm just going to call this page, but you can name your your page whatever you want so i'm going to go ahead and click on use the divi builder and then we're going to click on use visual builder now over here we're going to get three options we're going to choose build from scratch so i'm going to select it and then we're going to go with four columns we're going to close this for now and then we're going to go into the row settings and then over here i prefer working with this snap to the left so i'm going to choose that and then just drag this over here to the right so i can see most of my design so the next stage now is to set our gutter width. So I'm going to come over here to design, sizing, and then over here for my gutter width, I'm going to activate it. And then over here where it says use custom gutter width, I'm going to say yes. And then we're going to set this to one. Next, we need to set our custom margins. So I'm going to come over here to spacing. And for my margin here, I'm going to set it to zero to both to the top and the bottom. And then I'm going to activate this chain here so that my value is added both to the top and the bottom. We're going to do the same for the padding again i'm going to activate the chain and then we're going to save the next stage now is to go into our section settings so i'm going to click here on this gear icon click on background and here we're going to add a gradient so i'm going to choose the second tab click this plus button and then i'm going to add my first color now if you want to use the same color as i'm using throughout this tutorial i will leave a link to the post in the show notes below right so let's go ahead and add our first color so i'm going to come over here and paste it like that. I'm going to add my second color. Now this color is has some transparency on it. So I'm going to click the second slider down a little bit so I can get the uh, transparency values. And then I'm just going to highlight and just paste my values between these brackets. Okay, so now the next stage is to adjust our gradient direction. So I'm going to come over here. We want this at 90. Next, we're going to set our start and end position, and this needs to be set to 50% for the start position and 50% for the end position. Next, we're going to add our custom padding. So I'm going to come over here to design spacing. And for the custom padding, we're going to add zero, both to the top and the bottom. And then save. Okay, so the next stage is to duplicate this row. So I'm going to go ahead and do that by clicking this icon. And then we're going to start adding our images. So the first image we're going to add is going to go into the top row in column three. So I'm going to click this plus button, search for my image module and select it. So here is where I'm going to add my image. So I'm going to come over here and just delete this. Click the plus button. And I have all my images here in my media library, but you can also use your own custom images. And by the way, this is the fitness layout pack. So if you want to use the exact same images, you can just install these images from the layout pack. So I'm going to go ahead and select my image here and click, and then I'll click on upload an image. Next, we're going to come over here to design spacing, and I'm going to add a custom margin of minus six VW. I'm going to save this for now. And then in the second row, I'm going to add an, an image. So I'm going to come over here, search for my image module, select it, and then I'm going to add my image. And this time it's going to be this one right here, upload an image. And uh, what we're going to do here is we're going to add minus 10 VW to the bottom margin. So I'm going to click here on design spacing and add my 10 VW. I'm going to save this for now. Next, I'm going to add an image to the same row, but in the fourth column. So I'm just going to duplicate this to make things easier for me and then just drag it over here like that. And then I'm just going to go in and change that image. So I'm going to click here on the gear icon, change my image, upload an image. And then I'm going to come over here to design spacing. And then I'm going to click, I'm going to save this as minus five VW. You may have noticed that I used the VW length unit for the custom margins. This allows the design to scale along the browser without jumping around. In fact, we have a full article which I'll link to in the show notes below for more information about the viewport width. So pretty much this is our final design. I'm just going to save this. Okay, so we're almost done. So the final part here is to add some margins to our section. So I'm going to come over here to my section settings, click on design, spacing, and I'm going to add my margins to the top. So for this, I'm just going to add 200 and 
200 to the bottom. So now we can see that our negative margins have created this design. So I'm going to save for now. And then we're going to move on to the next design. So we're going to start off by adding a new section. So I'm going to come over here, click this plus button and add a regular section. And in this section, we're going to add two columns. And before we add any modules, we need to go in and make some adjustments. So first of all, we're going to come over here to our column our row settings, click on background. We're going to add a color to our column one background. So I'm going to click this plus button, paste my value in here. We're going to go to design and set our custom width. So I'm going to come over here to sizing, use custom width, and we're going to set this to 700. And then over here, we're going to set our custom gutter width. So I'm going to set this to yes, and we're going to set this to four. Now it's time to add our box shadow all the way down here to box shadow. I'm going to select my box shadow style. And for the horizontal position, I'm going to set this to minus 10 and minus 10 for the vertical position as well. Next, I'm going to add my color. So I'm going to click here on the eyedropper tool and paste my color between the brackets and then save. Now it's time to add our text module. So I'm going to click this plus button and search for my text module. Select it. So over here, we're just going to add text which says about us. And we're going to highlight this and set it to a heading one like that. Next, we need to set our heading font. So I'm going to come over here to design heading text. And we are going to change our fonts to Fira Sans. And we're going to go with the condensed option. So I'm going to select this. For our font weight, we're going to make it ultra bold, all caps. We're going to align this to the center and give it a text color. So I'm going to click here on this uh, eyedropper tool, paste my color in here. Now it's time to set our heading text size. So currently it's set at 30 pixels, but we want this nice and big. So we're going to set it to 100. We're going to set our letter spacing at 10 pixels. And now, as you can see, the space we have for this title does not look great. So let's come over here to the sizing and set our width. So we're going to make this 600 pixels. Okay, so let's move over here and add our margins because we want this text to overlap this border. So I'm going to come over here to spacing. And then for the margin left, I'm going to set this to a minus 100. And I'm going to do the same to the right. So now we can see the text is now overlapping the border. Next, let's add our custom padding. So we're just going to add zeros throughout because we don't want any space around the text. The key to this design is to increase the width of the module so that when we add the negative right and left margin, the text module has room to extend beyond the column on both sides. Uh, we can also add a divider here if you wanted just to add to this design. So let me just save this and add that quickly. So I'm going to click here on this plus button and select my divider module. Next, I'm going to come over here to design color and we're going to add our color right here. And I'm going to paste it here. And by the way, if you want to use the exact same colors as I'm using throughout this tutorial, I will leave a link in the show notes below. Right. So now that I have my color, we're going to go to the divider weight. So I'm going to click here on sizing and we're going to set the weight to 12 pixels. And here for the width, we're going to set this to 150%. Now let's go ahead and add the custom margin. So I'm going to come over here to spacing. And what we're going to do here is we're going to add 15 to the top and minus 25 to the left and minus 25 to the right. So let's go ahead and do that. So here we're going to add 15 and then minus 25% to the left and the right. And then finally, what we need to do is to just make sure that uh, this line is not covering the text over here. So I'm going to go back into my text module here and add some margins to the top. So I'm going to click here on spacing and um, I'm going to add 40 here to my margin top. Great. So now that that's done, I'm going to go ahead now and save. And that is our design. The same technique is used here as well. We increase the width to a max of 150% so that we can extend the module outside the column on the left and the right. In our third example, we're going to be overlapping modules with buttons. So for this example, we're going to be using a layout pack from the soccer club so let's create a brand new page. So I'm going to click here on add new. I'm just going to call this soccer. Use the TV builder. And then I'm going to go straight to the visual builder. Now this time, instead of starting from scratch, we're going to choose a pre-made layout pack. I'm just going to search here for soccer. And then I'm going to select my landing page. Click on use this layout. And in a moment, this layout is going to be installed on this actual page. 
So if you notice here, we have these two buttons here. So what has happened here is there's been a margin bottom of zero that has been added to this top one here and zero to the top margin so that these buttons look like they're on this actual video. So what we're going to do is we are going to use some negative margins and have these buttons overlap the video. So we're going to come over here to the top module, click on this module settings, and then we're going to come over here to design spacing and add a margin bottom. So as you can see, the button now is overlapping the video. So we're going to save this for now and then move on to the bottom button. So I'm going to go into the uh, module settings as I did before, click on design spacing, and then we're going to add a margin top this time. And notice that it's minus 56, same as the other button. So now our button is now overlapping this video module. Okay, so in our next example, we are going to be overlapping sections with rows. So for this example, we are going to be using a real estate landing page. So I'm going to come over here to pages, click on add new. So I'm just going to call this page real. Click on use different builder. And then we're going to go straight to the visual builder. Now, as we did before, we're also going to use a pre-made layout. So I'm going to choose this option. Search for real estate. And then here's our real estate landing page. So I'm going to select it and then click on use this layout. So as you can see here, this row is actually overlapping. So let's take a look and see what happened here. So I'm going to click here on the row settings. I'm going to snap this over to the left. We're going to click on filter and then we're going to go to modified styles. So here on the modified styles, we can clearly see here that we have a minus 10% that has been set here as the negative margin. So if I get rid of this, you'll notice that this now goes back into that position. So just by adding a negative margin here, it, you can creatively change the design of your page. Now let's move on to the fifth design. This time we're going to be extending rows on hover. So for this example, we're going to use the plumber services page. So again, I'm going to add a brand new page. Click here on add new. I'm going to call this plumber, use the builder. And then we're going to go to the visual builder, choose pre-made layout. I'm going to search for my plumber layout pack. We're going to go with the services page and then use this layout. Great. So the area we're going to focus on is this area here, which has the 10% off. So what we're going to do is we're going to hide this information by default and then reveal it when we hover. So to do this, we're going to open up the row settings and update the following. So I'm going to click here on this gear icon. I'm going to snap this over to the left. We're going to come over here to our column background color. Click the plus button. And I'm going to add my color. Now this color is going to be an RGBA value. So I'm just going to drag the slider down and paste the values between the brackets. Just like that. Next, we're going to add a custom width to, do, uh, to this part. So I'm going to come over here to design sizing, use custom width, and then we're going to set our custom width to 800. We're going to set our gutter width to one. And then over here for the alignment, we're going to align this to the right. So I'm going to select this option here. Now we need to add our custom margin settings to get the hover effect. So I'm going to come over here to spacing. We're going to add our custom margin over here. Next for our column two custom padding, we're going to activate this chain because our value is going to be the same for the left and the right. So my value here is going to be two VW. Now it's time to set our harvest state. So I'm going to click here on this um, arrow icon, click on the hover. And then for the right margin on hover, we're going to set this to zero. And so now we can see that this is revealing this information. So if I toggle between the default and the hover, you'll notice that that's actually really cool. And then finally, we're going to go ahead and save and publish our page. So now when we hover over it, you can see that this information here is revealed when I mouse over the 10% off. So there you have it. Thank you all for watching. If you like this video, please give me a thumbs up and do follow us on our social media platforms. By doing so, you'll be notified every time we release new tutorials. And if you have any questions regarding this tutorial, please leave your questions in the comments box below and I'll do my best to respond to them. Until next time, thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video.